Greetings and salutations, my dear audience. This is Joe St. Egg Benedictus coming at you from the uh, old church office and want to do a video on my pen Bible marking system. I did a brief intro to this in a short about a year and a half ago, so I want to go more in-depth and just show you how I mark my Bible and my particular unique pen marking system. It's much like others, but I figured I'd just... Uh, you know, show you, go over it and all that. So just want to give a shout out to my uh, pal Mike, to all the visionaries and mystics out there. Thank you for joining me as we uh, jump right in. First of all, as you can see my desk here, we're all set up for all kinds of cool uh, sermon stuff here. Nothing specific. Why is this having trouble? There we go. There we go. All right. So really cool. Um, man, this thing is really having trouble today. Focusing. All right. Focus, stupid. All right. So here on my desk, I have this box, and this is my pen marking box, as you can see. I'm going to try to figure out how to best do that. There we go. Okay. Uh, it's just something I picked up at a uh, yard sale or a thrift shop or something. Open it up, and then there you go. There's my pen uh, marking system. I have my card here, so I always know what to do. So let's just go through it real fast, first of all. Nice uh, blue Musgrave pencil if I ever need blue. I use this a lot for sermons. So like in my uh, my sermon Bible, which I don't have with me, I kind of mark this so I can see it. It stands out. I have highlighters. These are neat highlighters. They're clear tip, which are pretty cool. All right, so let's go through it. First of all, we have black, which is just notables, general insights, um, just everyday underlining don't fit really a unique category and what I do is my colors are very very specific categories so this is the catch-all all right black uh, we have here green actually we have two greens two greens here and green is justice and ecology so anything having to do with um, justice that deals with um, environmental justice um, um, ecological justice things like that. Uh, it usually gets green. Uh, it's a crossover with red because red is war, violence, and peacemaking, which also has to do with justice. So sometimes I do justice in red if it has to do with peacemaking. So the green is more of a ecology, uh, kind of global justice. And um, if, if you ever look into the green Bible, uh, it's, it's a beautiful Bible. And instead of red letter, it's green letters. And it's a cool Bible. I've been trying to find mine. I lost mine about eight years ago, and I can't find it, or else I would review it. Blue, let me see, I have two blues, because you can never have just one micron. Blue is wisdom or discipleship. So anything having to do with discipleship and wisdom, and that can be discipleship from our point of view, like for instance, um, like quiet times, prayer times, things like that, or, or wisdom which can be from an Old Testament point of view. So, so study of God's word, Torah, um, meditation, things like that. So wisdom and discipleship can be both the, the intellectual part of it, like for instance, Psalm 119, and then the more practical side of it, like prayer, fasting, things like that. Okay, um, Which is interesting, because where would Sabbath fit? depending on the verse, would it fit in peacemaking, discipleship, wisdom, or justice, Sabbath? Depends. All right. So we have here brown. Brown is research. Now, what differentiates brown and black? Because black is general insights. Brown is when I've researched a passage and I have an insight that is unique to that particular passage. So if I'm studying or doing an exegesis on like a passage or a scripture and there's a, a note that's that's specific to that. I'll I'll, I'll do use brown to show that it's researched. It's from a, an article or a book. Whereas black is just that catch-all insight stuff. Purple is one of my favorites. Purple points to anything messianic. Messianic promises, uh, atonement, uh, foreshadowing of Christ, and anything to do with. Um, with Jesus or, or covenantal promises. Covenants, messianic promises, gets purple. So that gets used a lot. And then orange is my Pentecostal color. So it's prayer, spiritual things, um, 
uh, anything having to do with life in the spirit, uh, things like that. So I think that covers it. I do have a yellow highlighter, but it's at home. I also have a yellow um, uh, Hermitage uh, Musgrave pencil, but it looks like it's not in here at the moment, but that's okay. All right, so how does this work? Because it's fun to have a pencil system, but let's see how it works. Now, this is my this is my sermon Bible. I've uh, used this for since 2010. It's the Oxford Annotated Bible. Many of you who are familiar with this channel are familiar with this. And just to give you a smattering of what I mean, uh, let's see here. Let's go to the first tab and see what we have. All right, so here's just an example of my research brown tab. All right, so he built a city and named it Enoch after son Enoch. I have a note. So, um, according to Robert Alter, the first to build a city was the first to murder. So it's an anti-urban bias in Genesis, uh, which not only Alter gets at, but you can read about probably in Brueggemann and in other uh, research. There's not only an anti-urban bias in, in the Old Testament, but also uh, anti-technology. So, for instance, when technology is used to dehumanize or... Uh, rob others of human life that is shunned upon by the Lord, which brings us to like, for instance, Exodus. If you go to the Exodus story, some technology, um, by the way, here's purple, which is messianic covenantal. This is God. It's Exodus six, where God really declares who he is, but like technology such as chariots are really looked down on. And so if you go to the flood story, it is Passover uh, when I'm making this, um, you can see there's a lot of messianic purple, atonement, covenant, redemption, and red, which is peacemaking or violence. So you can see all the places where chariot and chariot drivers are in the uh, Passover, uh, the crossing of the Red Sea, and then also in the Song of Moses here. So that's red. Good example of red. All right. So here we have two examples. Again, purple is um, messianic covenant foreshadowing. So it says that um, Moses was on the mount for 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote the tablets of the words of the covenant. The 15, no, the 10 commandments. Um, I knew Moses was on the mountaintop for 40 days, 40 nights, but I didn't know he fasted. So I found that to be an interesting point, and I underline it, and, and to me that's a messianic foreshadowing of, of Christ. We have read up here, uh, take, not, uh, take care not to make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land to which you're going, or will be a snare among you. So that's um, a warning against the allegiances, which to me has to do with more peacemaking, uh, justice, or violence, or a avoidance of violence, or let me see what else red is, war. So allegiances, you can't make allegiances for the, for the sake of self-defense or war. All right, so this is general insight. This is black. Okay, if you have abandoned me and worshiped other gods, therefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry to the gods. So black is also just personal insight, something that caught my attention that maybe I read it and was moved or I, um, it hit me a certain way. And, you know, I don't like to let those moments go. If the, if the word of God moves me, and it really doesn't fit in a category. I'm going to just put black or, and go from there. Um, so general insights. and Insights are spiritual as well as intellectual. Here we have blue, let me, uh, which is wisdom and discipleship. So this is about um, uh, Uzziah. It said that um, Uzziah was teachable. He set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. So to me, that's wisdom, discipleship. Um, this is another insight. But when he had become strong, he grew proud to his destruction. For he was false to the Lord as God and entered the temple of the Lord to make offering on an altar of incense. So pride, again, point of wisdom or lack of wisdom. Okay, so we have Jotham next. He was strong because he ordered his ways before the Lord his God. So wisdom, discipleship. The following of the Lord, seeking God's face, things like that. All right, let's see here. We have several colors here. We have some remnant theology, okay? Uh, the Lord will set apart a tenth 
portion, but even though he sets it apart, he will burn it as a controlled burn or cleansing fire that's more ecological. And then I have this in purple because the stump, uh, the Lord says that a stump will remain standing when a tree is felled, and that holy seed will be its stump, which to me is messianic. I have discipleship here, wisdom. Then he said, how long, O Lord, will a judgment come? And I put a season, meaning uh, that it's temporary. Uh, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. I put Acts 27, 19. I put that in orange because, again, it's a vision, so more prayer, spiritual. The hem of his robe, Luke 8, 44, that's in purple, foreshadowing of Christ or pointing to something messianic. Again, you know, this isn't like a hard science. This is more of my my insights and my particular journey through God's word. Here's some red here, okay, uh, which is peacemaking on this mountain. The Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow of well-aged wines. I could have easily done this in purple uh, because um, it is messianic. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. I highlighted that, so that might have been an old highlighting before I had the uh, pencil system in place. All right, once more, one more, then we'll go from there. Here's some blue. All right, so this is peacemaking. We do not live to ourselves. Whether we die or whether we live, we are the Lord's, and then let us then pursue what makes for peace and mutual upbringing. So that's peacemaking. I have a note here, Ezekiel 42, 14. I don't know why, but here's blue. Um, do not repay evil. That's the government's job. Cannot be divorced from 1214. So I might have done that for discipleship or some wisdom or something. It could have probably just been done in black. And I also write in pencil. You know, there are a lot of places where I just do pencil just as a general insight. Make uh, Mamo happy. All right, so that's really my, uh, my, my color system. You can see a plethora of colors here. My color system is only about a year old, so and this I've been using this Bible for 13 years. So you're going to see a lot of markings that are either not according to the color system or just um, previous notes. So I have a lot of notes like in the back of books and stuff and things like that. So just depends on where you are, uh, depending on when I studied it. My splotch there of ink, making Mamo. Uh, turn over in his chair. All right. And uh, just all kinds of fun stuff. Here's more brown. Let's see what research insight I do. Uh, what then becomes a boasting? Philip Essler, verse 27, what is our claim of honor? Boasting is a terrible translation. Essler, page 168. So Philip Essler is, uh, looks at the honor and shame of Rome. And so I have that in brown. It's a point of research from a book or article. So there you go. Well, thank you for joining me, and uh, I hope that you have a wonderful day and that um, you uh, like, subscribe, and uh, comment below. Let me know what you think and what your pen system is, and we'll continue the conversation below in the comments. Thank you so much. Uh, see ya!